Hi, welcome. We, oh, we've got plans today. I bought these shoes back in like November or December when I felt like customizing more vans. It is July now, we're, we're in the end of July and uh, it's time to finally paint on them. And you know, I had this realization when I went to paint on them that all these little like Angelus paints that I use to customize my shoes were starting to run out. So I went to Blix and I got some new colors, some happy, fun summer colors like this uh, collector's edition Yeezy color. And boy, look at the name on this, Grinch Green. Anybody else out there like so excited for Christmas? Because I am stoked, I cannot wait. That was really loud, really loud. Wow, that was fun. That took a long time to land. <laughs> anyway, let's open these vans up. This is gonna be a good time. I feel like it's been a while since we've done a customization video. It is a men's size six and a half and a women's size eight. And I thought it would be fun to take a famous painting and sort of put it on these vans. I've kind of always wanted to do that with Claude Monet's water lilies. I actually went to France two times and both times I was there, I saw Monet's water lilies in person. It's about enough to make you cry. It, like, they're huge paintings. They're beautiful, they're lovely. And it was like all my childhood dreams of admiring Monet's work just kind of came true because I got to see it in real life. Anyway, that's besides the point. We're gonna put them on shoes. Oh my goodness, look how satisfying all these colors are. And then there's this crowd on the end that just like couldn't fit, you know? <laughs> Workstation at the ready, let's go. All right, we have our blank slate here. Probably get a nice little angled brush perhaps. Two angled brushes. Since we're going to be doing Monet's water lilies and there are different like sections on this shoe, let's kind of uh, block out some stuff. So Monet's paintings are notorious for having lots of different colors in his work. He's very impressionistic. And something I noticed about the water lilies is there's a lot of this lilac color. She's a pretty color. Look at that gorgeousness. I have this little dabbing paper towel from my last painting. I don't think it's in too bad a shape. Let's reuse it. Ooh, I love this color already. So the tricky part is gonna be like, avoid this Vans tag. I don't wanna let go of this tag until the purple dries. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love this color so far. It's really pretty. All right, we have the first shoe started. This is the purple color so far. I think it'll look really cool because we're gonna do the big painting like here and back here. So if one part remains like kind of bold, kind of solid, I think it'll be a fun touch. Just gonna take care of this tag here right off the bat. So before we continue painting these shoes, I wanna give a big thank you to Replica Surfaces for sponsoring today's video. Replica surfaces are lightweight, rigid surfaces that are stain resistant and they replicate real textures like wood, cement, marble, tile, and so much more. They're really great for bloggers, photographers, Instagrammers, business owners, or anybody who has a story to tell. We all know it's really hard to take a good photo, but Replica Surfaces is here to help you achieve those coveted photos, get the aesthetic you want by providing you with essentially like a mini studio that you can take anywhere you go. It's easily transportable, and I love that there are so many options to choose from. 
In fact, you can create over 150 different combinations with the vast selection of surfaces that they offer. And every four to six weeks, they do these limited releases. So if you're interested in expanding your collection, you can hop on that, get a limited release, and they sell out within hours. It's really cool. A couple things I really like about replica surfaces, they are easily transportable, but perhaps my favorite thing of all is they are glare resistant. So if you are a photographer or a videographer, or somebody who uses a lot of studio lights to set up your area, we know that glares are our worst enemy. It is so annoying moving stuff around to try to get rid of those glares. So I am so thankful that replica surfaces are glare resistant. It is very helpful for somebody like me. <laughs> now something unique about replica surfaces is they genuinely want you to succeed. And with that, they go above and beyond. They don't just offer you a surface, but they offer you a community. They have a VIP Facebook group with over 10,000 members. They're always posting photos and encouragement, inspiration, and stuff to help you succeed with your photo taking. And if you think that's great, they also go the extra mile by doing video how-tos. They offer weekly YouTube videos, daily Instagram posts, regular TikToks, because they really want to help you amp up your photography game and get the most out of their surfaces. So if you wanna start building your Replica Surfaces collection, go to replicasurfaces.com and use the code MiraBiler for 15% off your first purchase. If you purchase two or more surfaces, you're gonna get stands to assemble them and free shipping, so that's an excellent deal. Once again, that is replicasurfaces.com and use the code MiraBiler for 15% off. Thanks again, Replica Surfaces, for sponsoring this video. You've made my life so much easier as an artist who does YouTube and Instagram, has a small business, and I am incredibly grateful for that. Anyway, let's get back to painting and see what happens with these shoes. I just let the shoe dry and now we have our base coats. I'm gonna leave this blank for now. You'll see what happens later. So now it's time to paint some of Monet's water lilies on here. I'm so excited for this part. So I'm trying to think about how I want to do this and I think what I'm going to do is water lilies in his style, but maybe not an exact painting. Like I'll probably alter it a little bit um, because I'm doing this on shoes. It makes it a little more difficult and yeah, I'll just feel it out as we go. He's done a lot of water lily paintings, but I think I want to do a more like saturated version because I just want these shoes to scream like happy, you know? Okay, I'm just gonna put them side by side. Maybe start blocking out like lily pads. That sounds fun, right? Monet is very notorious for including like a lot of different colors in his work. So I'm excited to see what we decide to do together. You and me. I wanna use this guy cause it says Yeezy and there's a red cap on it different than all my others. Whoa, that freaked me out. There's no like little brush thing. Gonna use this Grinch green here. This pale yellow will probably be cute. Um, what in the world? Uh, this is brand new and this is looking crusty and lumpy. I don't know about this one, guys. I like this paint, but that is, uh, I don't like that one. Part of me really wants to do this neon pink. <laughs> 
I'm just getting my whole palette ready. We're gonna have a party here, a painting party. Ugh, I cannot open this. Whatever, good thing I bought a new one. <laughs> Okay, so the painting that I'm like kind of going for, the lily pads are all different colors, but I'm just gonna start by making them green so I like know where I'm at. Who knew painting lily pads on shoes would be so tedious? What do you think? Does this look like lily pads yet? We're gonna need some pale blue as well. Oh, I can already tell this is gonna be so fun. I love the fact that this is like super impressionistic and I can just go crazy with brush strokes, you know? So I think my favorite part about painting these shoes was definitely the water and the reason why is because there are so many different colors that are used in the water. And as I said, I'm trying to sort of replicate a painting from Claude Monet, and it's actually two paintings, but I wanted to try to mimic the brush strokes and to portray all those colors that are shown in the water. It was actually a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be too because there are so many little brush strokes that go into this. So it ended up being a very tedious task, but it was a rewarding task and I felt like I learned a lot from it. So if you've seen my recent how to fill your sketchbook video, I actually did a Monet painting at the end of that too. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I have been replicating paintings from the masters and hopefully it gives you guys some inspiration to maybe tackle big things yourself. So during the summer months are usually my experimental months of the year. I am most inspired during the summer and right now there are so many things I want to create, but I feel like I need to push myself and I need to get out of my comfort zone and do things like this on occasion to learn things. There's a lot of benefit from studying paintings from the masters because it gives you a glimpse into different types of brush strokes that maybe you don't implement in your normal work, uh, color theory, and just proportions and so many other stylistic things. And you kind of get to taste and see them in your own work. And I really enjoy that aspect of creating paintings from the masters. A person who has kind of encouraged me to do that here on YouTube is Jimena Reno. She is probably my favorite YouTube artist. Her artwork is beautiful. And I've just seen how her artwork has grown and evolved. And she always goes back to painting stuff from the masters and learning. So it's really inspired me to try to do the same, especially because now I'm trying to do larger paintings and chase after the stuff that has always scared me. So I have like a three by three foot canvas in my studio right now, and I'm doing these kinds of studies to gear up for it. And I'm so excited. A couple people have asked me, like, are you doing this because you're running out of ideas? That is definitely not the case. 
I'm just trying to prepare myself for ideas that I do have and uh, do things like this. I think these kinds of activities are also a nice confidence booster. So if you struggle, if you want to learn things, if you want to do big paintings of your own, but maybe you're scared, uh, this is a really good thing to do is to study other people's work. Just don't like sell it as your own and stuff like that and make sure you credit them. <laughs> like I will not be selling these shoes because like I do not have like the rights to this, you know? Anyway, that's all. I feel like the water really started coming to life at this part of the painting because I started adding like dark green and layering all these other colors and it gave it so much dimension. Like at first when it was just the solid shoe, I hardcore doubted myself, believe it or not. I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna turn this into what Monet did. But it took a long time. It took a lot of studying his paintings and figuring out how to do that myself. I really enjoyed doing all the little brush strokes in the water too, because my thing, I guess when I paint water is to kind of smooth the brush strokes out. I'm more of a realism type water painter. So this was fun. This loosened me up broke me out of my comfort zone and I just think it's fun that this is on a pair of shoes instead of like a canvas. I think that made me feel more enthusiastic about this entire project. I think one of the reasons why I chose these water lilies to paint though is because I'm very passionate about painting water these days. And when I saw these paintings and saw how much like green and purple and all these other colors are in the water, I was like, ooh, I have to do that. <laughs> Okay, we have this blank canvas here on the back of the shoe. I'm mixing up some purple and we're gonna do a little Mirabiler twist back here. What does that mean? It means I'm using whatever colors I want, but applying the same technique that we did for the painting on the front of the shoe. And my goal here is to hopefully make it look like it's related to the front but like I just kind of want to do my own thing back here so you know we'll see we'll see where this goes hopefully it really does look like it's uh related though to the front of the shoe
it's definitely been a while since we've done a shoe customization on my channel. And I really enjoyed the process of this one. I honestly feel like these are my favorite shoes I've ever customized. I think it's because nature really inspires me, especially water and flowers. And to get the best of both worlds with Monet's water lilies and being able to practice art from one of the masters just feels so special to me. Especially knowing that I've seen these paintings in person too and it just felt like so sentimental to create this. Anyway, I hope you folks enjoyed this. If you want more shoe customizations in the future, feel free to thumbs up this video or drop a comment down below to let me know and yeah, maybe we'll make it happen. Anyway, have a good week everybody. I will see you next week with something that I've actually been hinting at for a while. So that's your hint that I've hinted at it. But if you wanna know where I've hinted at it, I have a vlog channel called Freely Mira right here. And I post whatever I want over there. It's a channel where I am free to do whatever I want, hence the name. So if you ever wanna do like studio vlogs and hang out with me or travel vlogs or whatever else I decide in the future, I don't create art over there, I just do whatever I want. Pretty cool. Bye. <laughs>